there is a very, very exciting and interesting and rewarding and fabulous ecosystem that's developing within the cryptocurrency space. And I'm going to be talking to two others who are experts about this fabulous ecosystem that's emerging within cryptocurrency. Apollo had produced the ultimate hardware wallet for your cryptocurrency assets, probably the most secure hardware wallet going. Use my affiliate link and the code for a discount. Hey, Liam. Hey, Cryptocito. Thank you so much for making yourselves available. Do you want Thank to? Start? You. Yeah, you're so welcome. Do you want to? You're both YouTubers. And uh, you both cover a lot of the Cosmos projects. I think you know far more about the Cosmos projects than I do. So I'm going to be learning from you guys. And, and for people who are watching, you know, uh, I recommend you go and check out their channels. And of course, check out my channel, Crypto Rich BTC, my new channel because of the shadow ban on my main channel, Crypto Rich BTC. And I'm going to start by asking each of you to introduce yourselves, please. Do you want to go first? Uh, no, you go, go, go ahead, go, go ahead yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, I'm. Uh, my name's Liam. Obviously, I'm from the channel Confident in Crypto, big cosmonaut as well as, as maybe a lot of viewers will know. Um, so yeah, I guess just introduction wise, I got into crypto in in 2017. Uh, Ethereum, Bitcoin was pretty much what I got into, and then uh, funnily enough, actually, I did a Cosmos price prediction video, and there was uh, you know Crypto Cito's name when I searched Cosmos on YouTube, and I was like, oh, okay. Okay, someone else is doing doing this sort of move into the cosmos as well, um, and yeah, I guess for the last six months, just been covering uh, covering cosmos a lot, and uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Fabulous, fabulous, and your your channel is confident in crypto, and I'll have the link in the description below. And uh, crypto Cito? yeah, well, thanks uh, first of all for for setting this up. I always love to connect with other content creators, and I've seen you also being one of the first ones to cover the cosmos ecosystem. So. Um, I guess, um, especially the past few weeks, I've shown that we're on the right train, right? IBC adoption is growing a lot. Uh, um, the, the whole narrative around interoperability is taking off and slowly getting more and more, you know, understanding in the broader crypto community. Um, so, yeah, my journey is, uh, I guess, similar to, to your guys. Uh, I got into crypto in early 2017, mostly because of Bitcoin. I learned a lot about monetary pol policies and how money works, how gold works, right? How reserve currencies work and the fiat system. Um, took me a while before I started then to invest um, money into it, but since then I've been really, you know, thrown down that uh, rabbit hole. And uh, crypto, in my opinion, is, is just unstoppable. I remember, like in 2018, 2019, when we were like in the capitulation and bear market, um, everyone gave up. Um, people were were calling it dead, right? And uh, then we had a little bit of of hope here and there. You know, some celebrities were talking about it. And we're like, oh my god, this guy just talked about Bitcoin, and now it's completely normal that you know and on jimmy fallon or all these like talk shows in the u.s like people just talk about their latest nft purchase so crazy what what we did in, in the in the last three four years um the the president of el salvador is shilling bitcoin like no other and michael saylor and all these guys so i think uh, from this point on crypto is really unstoppable and i've just sticked around um like we talked about before we we hit the record button that you know, in, in these two years, 2018, 2019, I think this was really pivotal for me because I, I made crypto my career decision. I didn't just want to like blindly invest. I really wanted to understand the whole industry. Um, and I've been part of different industries. Like I worked in a crypto startup in, in China where I lived for a year. And then I started doing events. I started building the communities around the world. And I'm so glad that I um, got into Cosmos um, around, uh, this time around a year ago, actually. Um, and talked to a lot of developers on my channel, Cryptocito, where I um, just... At this point, actually, talk ninety nine percent about Cosmos because there's so much to cover. So, um, yes. yeah, and now full time, basically content creator and um, public learner. I, I like that term. There is, there is, and we're going to talk about because you you organised the Cosmoverse conference in Portugal, and there's one coming up in Colombia later on this year, which I'm hoping to be at this time round. So we'll mention that as well. But Liam, do you want to start by if, um, by saying how come you got into Cosmos and why Cosmos? And then I'll ask you that, Sito, and then I'm, I might say a little bit. Yeah, it'd be great to hear like uh, your side of things as well, uh, Rich. That'd be super interesting. Um, but as for me, uh, well, you know, like like uh, Michael said, actually, or like Crypto Sito said, um, it's a bit of a, a rabbit hole when you get into crypto. You know, you start off a lot of the time with Bitcoin, maybe Ethereum as well. Uh, and maybe you see a few other things, you know, especially if you got into 20, you know, 2017 period. 
Um, there's a few other things going on with ICOs and everything. And, you know, my big uh, my big thing with crypto was was Bitcoin sound money and Bitcoin was the future. And then, you know, all of a sudden I was like, wow, you can actually do computation on chain with Ethereum, right? So you could actually have programmable, you know, kind of applications which can lead to programmability, which can lead to all kind of like applications and stuff like that. Um, so I just kind of went down that route. You know, I started off very financial. I started off doing charts, that kind of stuff, um, technical analysis, which I still find super interesting. But yeah, essentially, Ethereum made me realize like how big you know the potential of blockchain was, and I think all, all three of us can probably agree that, that there's a lot of uh, potential sort of utilities. There's a lot of ways that blockchain can disrupt like the traditional sector. Um, and yeah, so I was still doing sort of TA videos for the most part. But I was also starting to do like fundamental research. So sort of beyond just looking at price action, really trying to understand like what made cryptocurrency what it is, why it was valuable, trying to understand the technology, but not being able to code myself, you know, not having that technology understanding already. So steep learning curve, like uh, Michael said, there's always something to learn. You're always learning. No one's an expert. Just some people know a little bit more than others, I guess, because they've been on the journey longer. Um, but I switched to Cosmos because uh, what I started like realizing, and this is when Polkadot started coming around, like I started understanding there was new chains out there that were doing different things, offered a different sort of solution to Ethereum. I think like the gas fees were starting to creep up. So Ethereum was getting more expensive. Um, and then, yeah, at some point, I think I asked, uh, you might know like Ivan on Tech on YouTube, right? I used to watch his show every day. Um, it's kind of what inspired me to make my own channel eventually, actually, was, was Ivan on Tech and, and people like Data Dash. Um, but what I what I kind of like asked is, you know, what's the difference between Polkadot and Cosmos? Because, you know, Polkadot was like hype. It was massive. But everyone was talking about it. But I was looking into Cosmos and it seemed like it was the same thing, you know, to someone who's looking in. We know now there's a lot of differences if we're like inside the community. But essentially, like the, the um, Ivan and Tech said to me, hey, there's no difference. It's just marketing. And that's pretty much the words he said, because obviously he's got a brief overview of, of the ecosystems. He didn't know it in detail. But then I was like, okay, so if that's the case, like, why isn't Cosmos in the top 10? Why is it not in the top five? And so I just dived straight into, into Cosmos down that route. And the more I've learned, the more I've kind of understood um, the potential of having multiple chains all connected and also just app-specific chains, right, which are, I'm sure we can get onto a bit later on. But I just realized there was so much bigger than one, one singular chain to rule them all. Great. Thank you. Uh, Sito? What do you yeah, do? so for me... Uh... Yeah, for me, it was uh, <clears throat> kind of like when I got into crypto, right? And I mean, in 2017, we've, we've all gone through this cycle where, where we had the, the ICO boom left and right. And the next big coin that's going to re replace Ethereum and the Ethereum killer, uh, killer narrative and all these kind of things, right? But then throughout the bear market, we had this um, um, kind of like narrative around Bitcoin maximalism that's suddenly became a big thing, right? Even for the for the content creators in, 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 in crypto. I remember like a lot of YouTubers started to exclusively um, cover Bitcoin because they're like, okay, all the outputs are, are trash. They're down 90, 95%. Um, but it became toxic really quickly. So I remember like late 2019, early 2020, I think was the peak. Um, and I was pretty much, because I always understood that cryptocurrency revolution is more like the establishment of a new internet, right? Where um, you have multiple versions variations and whether it's geographically or for different use cases or for different niches right um in the industry i mean there, there, there's probably going to be millions of blockchains that's my understanding how i view crypto so this whole idea that there's a chain that connects them all or a technology that connects them all always stuck with me right and i said earlier when i was living in china for a year um back then even we had interoperability protocols like back then it was ion i think icon from korea and also one chain they were like one of the first ones that kind of like ingrained this idea in me. So I'm like, okay, this is cool, but so far they haven't really done anything. And then when, when I learned about Polkadot, actually before I learned about Cosmos, I learned about Polkadot. I'm like, this is really, really huge. Like Polkadot is going to blow up just because, you know, they actually tried to tackle interoperability. Um, but then shortly after, um, I don't know why I had a bag of atoms and I, I was like, okay, either I start doing my like deep research or I just sell them. And I chose to do my research, which is uh, <laughs> something I'm really happy for. Um, and then just also like the way, I mean, Liam and, and everyone can confirm this. Like when you start talking about Cosmos publicly, suddenly developers will hit you up. They will respond to you, right? They're super active. They will jump on calls with you. They will explain you things. When I was just so excited to see that Jack Sample in back then, for, for me, he was like, oh my God, this is a lead developer of Cosmos. Like why would he even take the time to like jump on a call with me, right? Back then I had no, no big following. 
Um, but he walked me through. They had, this was pre-IBC. What the idea of IBC is, you know, how it works and how it's supposed to work, and um, what 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 um, what it brings for for the crypto um, industry. Um, but yeah, so that was my entry point into Cosmos, and the rest from there is history. I mean, I just got really really deep into it, talked to a lot of developers throughout the whole year, um, twenty twenty one, and um, since then, like like also Liam said, I, I learned the differences to Polkadot, how IBC kind of like um, functions at least. Um, on a on a um, kind of like uh, bird's eye view, right? Not on a technical layer because I'm also not a uh, developer or a coder or something like that. Um, but yeah, so that was my that was my journey, and the whole ecosystem is booming right now. So many coins and projects are coming yeah. up and doing great stuff. So um, we are, yeah, we are that's early. Why. We are early. The three of us are early, and if any of you, if you haven't got into the Cosmos ecosystem, do check it out. You are still early. This one will run and run. Long, long way to go. Okay. <clears throat> well, if I may say how I got into it. So I, I'm a child protection social worker. So of course I have this very intrusive job where I get into people's lives, but I also have a deep respect for privacy. So I'm into privacy. And from a, I started broadcasting in April, 2017, ran my channel then, and I got connected to Komodo and through Komodo, I got connected to Pirate Chain. And then through Pirate Chain, I got connected to the Blockchain Privacy, Security and Adoption Alliance, of which Sentinel is a founder member. So this was when Sentinel was an ERC20 token. And they said, oh, we're going to do a swap to Cosmos. And I was like, okay, kind of interested, kind of interested. See how that goes. And then um, in March 2020, I bought Atom on a whim. I did no research whatsoever, nothing. I thought, oh, this looks good. I'll buy a few. So I bought a few, staked them in my Exodus wallet and just left them. And every now and then I'd go in, get the rewards and um, <clears throat> restake them. And then end of June, Osmo Airdrop. What's that? Osmo Airdrop. And then I got interested. And then I looked at the Osmosis decks and I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. This is amazing. This is really, really amazing. And then I didn't have a lot of Atom, $500 worth, but I got, was it one for one? I got the Osmo. And then I was compounding that like crazy. And then I got Juno Chain and I was compounding that like crazy. And then I got Wawa and then I got compounding that like crazy and all the other airdrops. I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. And, um, <clears throat> I work part-time three days a week as a child protection social worker. I don't need the money from social work anymore. And that's in six, seven months of compounding like crazy and airdrops. So now I do social work. I mean, I want the money because I don't want to cash in. The, I don't want to cash in crypto. <laughs> My wife says, we're going to feed the kids. Well, I don't know. We'll feed them fiat. We're not feeding them crypto. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so so that that's done really, really well. And one of the things I really appreciate it is how... Um, it's made a difference to people. So I have helped out friends and family by giving them Osmo tokens. Go go set up a Kepler wallet. Here's some Osmo. Start staking it. You'll get airdrops. And um, I did a video with a friend of mine. And I told her about it in August. And, she, and I she's now able to pay for her mother's nursing care from her Osmo rewards which is just, so that's the thing that excites me most about the difference that it makes in people's lives. Yeah, that's absolutely beautiful, man. And uh, I think that's like, you see that in crypto in general, right? People have made life-changing money that they couldn't afford a, a, a very different lifestyle than they've always dreamed of. But especially in countries where you, you, you have very high inflation or where you know the, the average income is not that high, for them to make a couple of hundred bucks per month through whether it's staking or whether it's liquidity provision, right? Or DeFi stuff in general. Um, in my opinion, like Osmosis is the best is the best kept secret for that, right? Like on, a, on, on Uniswap right now or one inch or Sushi, right? You can earn swap fees. You can even farm a little bit, but the fees will almost eat your profits, right? If you have a small small amount of, of capital only that you can bring on the table. But Osmosis, it's fee-less, right? Like I said, the initial distribution was for Atom stakers and holders. So you got it for free. And uh, the APRs, I mean, if you started in June 29, uh, 2021, which is when it came out, actually on my birthday, June, June 19, 2021, um, and then a couple of days later, they launched the incentivized pools. I remember the beginning was like above 1,000%, right, to, to farm and, and staking rewards, like absolutely crazy. Um, and two weeks ago, Osmo hit, uh, what was it, $10.50 or something? Over $10. So, yeah, so people are, you know, and, and, and that's just one side of the thing, right? The other side is, if you look at, um, which I recommend everybody to, to get familiar with, is um, mapofzones.com or Minscan, you can see like the whole fundamentals of the chain, right? 
daily active users, IBC transactions, um, monthly active users, right? You can see how the chain grew over the time and how it decentralized over the time, right? You have now over 100, is it 100 nodes already running or 125 even? I think it's minimum 100 validators that are securing and decentralizing the chain. 170,000 monthly active users, something like that. Market cap shot above 5 billion, 4 or 5 billion or something at the peak. Like this thing has gained deep, deep liquidity. It's not listed on centralized exchanges, purely decentralized, powered by the tenement consensus algorithm, built on the Cosmos SDK, rolled out without VCs, without early investors to Atom stakers and holders. Perfect, beautiful launch. And the farmers and the stakers can just, which is the community, which is the users, right? They, they, can, uh, they can make good passive cash flow from that. Um, so obviously, you always have to be careful with these things, but on a big picture, it was a, a fantastic launch. And um, the innovations, maybe we can talk about this later, that are coming from here with super fluid staking and um, now also the Cosm Basm integration on Osmosis um, is going to bring it probably to an another level. So yeah, really, really incredible product and it took IBC mainstream in the first place. So really, really amazing. Yeah. Incredible. And that is in just six months since Osmo launched, it's gone from nothing to over $10. Okay, it's corrected a bit, but then everything's corrected. And like you said, the way that it's grown and the projects that are coming onto the Osmosis decks. Liam, do you, do you want to say what it is that excite you, excites you most about this ecosystem or the difference it's made to you? Or Oh, I mean, there's just so much that could be the most exciting thing. That's that's probably the most exciting thing in and of itself. You know, I know it's like probably not the best answer. Um, but, you know, good to say it was right about... Um, in osmosis it really showed the potential of, of cross-chain communication and ibc and i think they did that right because um there was already such a strong like foundation there you know from what had been built or you know the technology stack essentially that had been built so you had the sdk ready you know we had ibc um you know we had everything you know osmosis needed and then what osmosis did is they just brought to market this incredible uh exchange with an incredible uh user interface or ux with really good incentive structures to get people to add liquidity and compound rewards, basically an incredible token distribution. Um, and, and that's really why it's been so successful. And it's so exciting that Osmosis is just like one of the first successes in Cosmos, right? You know, there's going to be so many more um, and they're all going to be connected with one another. They're all going to be, you know, in a way like competing, but more importantly, like collaborating with one another. Um, and I think that's that's one of the most exciting things. You know, when we look at like Ethereum, it's all on one chain. Yet we're trying to build like bridges between, say, Ethereum and say Binance Smart Chain or Ethereum and, you know, Polygon. But they're all like specific chains. Right. It's specifically designed to bridge Ethereum to one other chain. But like, what's exciting about Cosmos is it's like every chain is ready to go with a generic bridge that can connect uh, one another together. So um, for me, it's just. It's just the ecosystem itself. There's no one specific thing that that really excites me the most. Um, I'm really keen on NFTs. I will say that because, you know, we've had DeFi um, do really well with Osmosis leading the pack, right? And that's just the, the tip of the iceberg with DeFi. You know, Osmosis has got things like liquid staking or, or super fluid staking, should I say, in their case, um, coming. And they've got other innovations. I think, you know, every chain is trying to implement Cosm Wasm. You know, Injective are looking to implement it. Osmosis is, I know Comdex is working on Cosmosm as well. I think Juno already has Cosmosm. So, you know, basically it's it's like, you know, everyone's innovating. And this exchange, this DeFi exchange is just the beginning of a DeFi because we're going to have things like Carver uh, doing some more stuff. We're going to have Umi, uh, you know, lending and borrowing sort of cross-chain. But what we haven't really got yet is like these cross-chain NFTs. We've got Stash App from, from Secret Network. Um, and I think we had, uh, you know, uptick or something. I'm not sure really about them, but they don't really seem to be in the conversation. I don't know why. Um, but we have like Stash app and, you know, we still have Stargaze to launch their actual NFT minting and um, the rest of it. And um, we also have Asset Mantle. We also have OmniFlix. And there's just so many things you can do with NFTs. Passage and Strange Clan. Have to mention them. Otherwise, you know, the, the oh, community. Oh, my God, Liam. Now you have to put this too much. There's too many. I know. And, the, <laughs> and it's still very young. It's still very young. I'm like, oh my god, and I have to prune my assets because you know, going through my Kepler wallet takes too long to stake and claim, stake and claim. claim There's always like one stake. asset you forget. There's always like one asset you forget to compound or stake. It happens all the time. That's right. That's right. Like, oh my god. Oh my god. It's too much to keep up. Sorry, I cut into anything else. Please rattle them all. <laughs> but the thing is, also, if, if you forget to mention one one coin here on this on this uh, video, the community is going to call you out. For that. <laughs> so you better mention all of them. That's right. Strange gun and, and 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 
Passage are, are, is also a big one because they're combining gaming with NFTs. So you have in-game NFTs that you can build um, your own kind of like community and you can build your own space within that game. So that's incredibly innovative and it's all powered by Cosmos technology and also Akash for the, for the commute, computing. So man, there's, there's so much. I mean, you can tell it from me and like we're, we're so excited about it. And yes. um, yeah, but I understand like if you're new to this, like, I mean, not you, but like the, the, the listeners, you hear these like 10 different projects and I'm like, man, there's already too much. Like I don't even know where to start. Um, so, but yes, slowly getting into it, getting familiar with some projects, start following some accounts on Twitter and you'll, you'll get a sense for, you know, how big the ecosystem is going to be and it's being established right now in front of our eyes. Yep. And, and, and I think the foundational ones, in my opinion, Atom, because that is the, the core coin of the whole ecosystem, and Osmo, because it's the governance token for the Osmosis Dex, which is just a fabulous beautiful decks and it is feeless you can do transactions and send for for no fee and they're fast just something else can, can i add so i think we should explain a little bit how cosmos is structured and architecture um should, should we talk a little bit about please, that or do, do you please, have another topic in mind i think both okay. of you are more, i think both of you are more qualified to talk about that my expertise is in um human beings especially little children rather than crypto <laughs> No, I think I think you're already very familiar and knowledgeable on, on Cosmos, but so especially in the last, yeah, I, I think especially in the last few weeks, there have been a lot of debates, like how you know about even the like the determination, right? How do we name the chain on which Atom resides, right? Because in fact, Cosmos is the name of the entire project of the entire ecosystem, right? Um, it's a network of blockchains, an internet of blockchains, but then you have Atom, which is the native asset of the Cosmos Hub. So in fact, um, the Cosmos Hub is um, just an individual sovereign layer one blockchain that is equal to, let's say, Osmosis or SIF chain or any other chain, right? Each region network, Akash and all these other chains. Um, but obviously, the Cosmos Hub has been the first chain, the first chain to implement IBC, the first chain to, to run um, Tenement and to be built on the Cosmos SDK, right? So it's kind of like this OG chain, which is why there's now conversations to say, hey, why don't we, you know, keep the branding of the Cosmos Hub just as Cosmos, because now if you go on CoinGecko or Coin Coin Market Cap, um, they just call it Cosmos, right? So everybody who's who's buying Atom, they say, "Oh yeah, I just bought some Cosmos," right? Um, so that's kind of like um, how Cosmos is structured. Every chain is its 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 own sovereign blockchain, and the way that um, Cosmos chains scale is basically number one through Tenement, which is an innovative proof of stake consensus algorithm that was developed. In uh, I think 2014, 2015 by Jake Kwan, then refined over the years with Ethan Buckman. Those are the two original founders of Cosmos. Um, and then it actually scales through IBC, which is this interoperability standard, right? To what TCPIP is for the internet, IBC is for the blockchain economy. So you can have application specific chains that are just there to fulfill one purpose, right? Uh, you made a vi video about Chihuahua the other day. Chihuahua is there to uh, be the, the meme coin on Cosmos, right? It's an application-specific use case. So you have this chain, then you have a cash, which is for the computing, um, for computing um, sector, right? That's, that's their application. Then you have Sentinel, which is for um, decentralized virtual uh, private networks, right? So you have all these like specific clear use cases that are separated from each other. But the way they scale, the way the entire Cosmos ecosystem scales is through IBC, right? Because it connects all these chains. And if you've ever done an IBC transfer, you probably either don't even notice that you just use IBC or it's so, it's so smooth that you're like, wow, this is amazing. Like there's no other ecosystem that has it, right? Um, so that's from an architectural standpoint. Um, but still, so we're right now at a point where Atom has crucial adoption, right? It has the most brand recognition. It's on all centralized exchanges. It's on Coinbase. It's on Binance, right? Cosmo is not on Coinbase. It's not on Binance yet. Maybe they want to list it, but I think nobody really cares about it. But so Atom could be this ultimate gateway into the Cosmos ecosystem um, where you have deep liquidity on, on centralized exchanges. Um, and also it could be the interchain service provider, right? So one thing that Polkadot pioneered was this concept of shared security that you have the centralized relay chain in Polkadot that can lend security to smaller chains so that they don't have to bootstrap their own validator network, right? Because right now in Cosmos, every chain is sovereign, so you have to have a sovereign set of validators, right? Which takes time and energy and money to like, you know, and conviction also, right? For validators to secure the chain. So with interchain staking, that's what is called on Cosmos, on the Cosmos Hub. The Cosmos Hub could be more positioned as kind of like this interchain service provider for other Cosmos ecosystem projects, right? 
which then would mean with rising adoption of Cosmos technology, Atom would accrue more value, right? And interchange security is just one example. There's also IBC routing um, or Atom as a holding company where you could acquire other projects and kind of like the valuation of Atom rises with a rise of the valuation of the entire ecosystem. So that's where we are standing right now. We're still very early, but I think it's important for people to understand, um, and that's my point here, is that the Cosmos Hub, which is the chain on which Atom resides, is a sovereign blockchain and does not, at this point at least, represent exposure to the entire ecosystem, right? So I think that's the point. Like, for example, if you buy DOT, you're basically betting on all the parachains because people have to buy DOT, lock them up to get a parachain slot. That's not the case in Atom. It's a very open democratic system, which is probably a little bit wor- like a little bit to the disadvantage of the fundamentals of Atom. But I think it's very, very, very healthy for the long-term success of Atom. So that's why I'm I'm extremely bullish in the longer run that if IBC you know doesn't get exploited or hacked or or whatever. Um, and uh, Cosmos Technologies uh, proves to be secure and safe and, and scalable, I think that Cosmos Hub and Atom is going to accrue a lot of value. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to, to share that a little bit on an architectural Thank standpoint. You. I just wanted to add to that as well, actually, on the uh, the scaling like side of things, um, because, you know, Critisir is right, like the, the uh, cross-chain bridge between all the sovereign blockchains helps the whole network scale. But actually, like interchain security in itself is is basically a scaling solution, right? You know, because Cosmos is all about like having multiple chains that each serve like different types of applications. So, you know, we have like chains like Evmos, which might host multiple applications in some way. Or we have chains like Agoric or Terra is a great example, actually, where loads of applications are on them. But what Cosmos allows, uh, you know, in terms of scaling is you can just have 10 chains or 20 chains or 50 chains. And then the shared security element means that you can basically get these chains live very easily and just secure them with an existing valid data set, right? So, you know, imagine imagine you've got a chain that already has 10 applications on it and it needs to scale. What does it do? It just takes that one of those applications and just moves it onto a sovereign chain and then just connects it to its valid data set under the interchain staking. So it, in a sense, you know, this in, interchain security uh, actually allows the network to scale even further. Um, and, and I think part of the tech stack that we, we haven't really touched on is the Cosmos SDK, which basically facilitates the creation of all these chains in a seamless or, or very simple fashion or way. So that actually just adds to the, the easy scalability of, of the network. Um, I just want to say one more thing quickly, which is, you know, Cryptosia is right. Atom doesn't uh, represent the whole ecosystem at this point. Um, I think it still gives the best exposure to the whole ecosystem because of that branding, just because of people's perception and just because of where it's positioned maybe to capture value in the future. But there is still a lot of work to be done. You know, even shared security, that will be implemented by Terra. That will be implemented by Evmos. You know, that'll be implemented by persistence. Loads of chains are going to implement shared security or interchain staking because it's just going to be an IBC module, right? As far as I understand, which just means anyone can just add it to their chain, basically. Um, but, you know, the real difference comes with with Atom being, uh, A, the gateway, like Cryptocita said, but B, just being neutral enough because nothing's fully neutral, right? Because communities are biased, but neutral enough where, you know, it can offer this sort of security uh, in a way to chains that don't have any competition with the hub as it is today, right? So it can offer security to an exchange, um, whereas Osmosis might not want to, or maybe an exchange might not want to get security from, say, Osmosis because it could have a conflict of interest because it's a competing DEX. Or, you know, maybe a chain won't want to uh, get security off of Terra if it's got its own stablecoin because it might be in competition with Terra's stablecoin. So, um, yeah, I think the fact that Cosmos is, is more neutral gives it more more sort of positioning to capture value in the ecosystem. Okay. Thank you both, right? Thank you. And listening to you, I mean, some of it I don't understand, but what I can get is how it it will create the whole, it will make the whole system more robust because of the connections. Like the, everybody will benefit out of interchange security. The other point that I want to make, this is why you should subscribe to Crypto CETO's channel and also to Confident in Crypto channel. And I have the links in the description below. And that is because of your grounded, how both of you are grounded in the tech and in the workability of, um, of the Cosmos ecosystem. So thank you for that explanation. Th- there's a couple of things I want to cover. And then I think we should, we should wrap this up. So one is I want to I understand ION and what's happening with ION. Right? I, I, just, I bought some ION at the beginning. I think I wasn't airdropped any iron. I bought some iron. It's done very, very well. I have no idea what it, I have some idea what might be coming down the line, right? But it was a, it is a token with no function. 
currently, right? Okay, I'll buy some. That'll do. And then the other, I think before that, or, or perhaps after, let's do that after, is superfluid staking, which I refer to as liquid staking, which is very, 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 very exciting. So let's do, let's do a little bit on ION. What's the deal with ION? Sita, do you want to start? Yeah, maybe I can start because I've, uh, I've been covering it a couple of times on my channel. And um, so <clears throat> basically, the ION is baked into the Osmosis Genesis. It's uh, residing on the Osmosis chain. It doesn't have its own blockchain. Um, and it was just this last minute idea of Sonny, who is uh, one of the co-founders of Osmosis, and also a core developer of Cosmos for many years. Like, hey, wouldn't it be cool to have this second token? And we don't know what we do with it, but you know, we'll probably figure out a use case for it later. So they released it. Um, in the beginning, it was just this random price finding, right? Um, and it was dropped as an airdrop to uh, governance participants and also um, SICA delegators. That's a note of Sunny on the, on the Cosmos Hub. So that's how it came into circulation. Um, and it's ultra scarce. There's only 21,500 uh, coins, I think, um, that were minted. It has a max supply. Um, and then the community started to like the branding and like the meme, right? I mean, or in fact, it was a meme coin. Um, and then they try to figure out use cases for it, right? So they looked into uh, what Terra did uh, with Luna and UST, the mint and burn model. Um, then they looked into other things like Olympus DAO and Wonderland and how they kind of like um, function with their mint and burn uh, models or bonding models as well. Um, so fast forward, I think, to, well, first of all, in December, then we had this big clawback, right? When the phase that you can claim your airdrop expired. And in fact, more than 80% of the ions that were supposed to be airdropped were clawed back into the community treasury. So, right, um, in fact, only 5,000 ions are right now circulating. The rest is in the community treasury. Um, so that makes it even much more scarce, right? Um, that's why the price also shot to above $20,000 uh, around that time. Um, and then the latest state is that um, Sunny um, wrote this blog post on uh, Commonwealth where... He basically proposed the idea to ionize assets. And what that means is basically um, to generalize the concept of UST with Luna, right? If you want to issue or mint UST, you have to burn Terra, uh, burn Luna. And if you want to redeem your UST, you're minting Luna, right? So it's back to the underlying, it's backed by Luna, basically. Um, and in Ion's case, the idea is to mint and burn Ion to issue I assets. I assets being synthetic assets, such as could be you know gold, could be silver, could be stocks or anything, right? Um, with incentivized liquidity on osmosis. Um, in order for that to happen, they might also have to remove the, the max supply, the max cap of the ion token. So that would make it not ultra scarce anymore. But I think for the long-term success of this idea, um, that would have to be one of the conditions. Um, and they just set up a team, right? So they made an on-chain proposal a few weeks ago to uh, to remove the clawback ions from the osmosis treasury into its own ion treasury so they will be able to fund the development team to exclusively work on this ionized idea right so um yeah that's the current stage and i think it's a great idea um expanding on the concept of terra with luna and ust and just generalizing that um and yeah i think it's it never hurts to to own some ion <laughs> no financial advice <laughs> no financial advice that's right you do your own due diligence don't go and buy Atom on a whim like I did. <laughs> Liam, anything you want to say about Ion? I actually don't know much about Ion. I know um, all I know is CryptoCito liked it. That was basically my perception of Ion. Um, but <laughs> it seems really interesting. Um, I, I assume then it doesn't, you know, CryptoCito, does it tie back to the Osmosis token in any way? Or is it just going to be like a completely separate uh, economy, despite, aside from like, you know, the I assets getting incentivized by, by Osmo? I think the primary marketplace for I assets is going to be on osmosis. So if there was actual organic demand for I assets on osmosis, I guess some at least some of the pairs will be tied to the Osmo coin, which would mean a side product of that whole success of Ion would mean buy pressure for Osmo, right? To to spin up the liquidity pools so um and, and um keep in the, the liquidity. So yeah, and, and overall I think I think I, I mean I, I talked with Jake uh, who is um, a good friend of uh, Josh Lee, who is one of the founders of Kepler Wallet, right? So OG Cosmos people. Um, and Jake right now is actually taking the lead on this idea and I ask him, hey, do you think one day ION could be on its own chain? And he said, yeah, technically long term, you know, that's probably where it's headed to. So I think 
Ion obviously benefited a lot from the success of Osmosis. Um, but at one point, if the AI assets idea and Ionize works out, um, it should potentially be on its own chain. So um, we'll see. But short term, I think it could it could benefit the, the Osmo um, price, um, at least to a small degree. And, and it is very speculative because it is a token which has no use case. It's pure speculation right now, like a promise in the future, as was the case in 2017 when many projects launched. Okay. I, I think I, Go on, Liam. I'm sorry to interrupt. I think I was going to say that's basically where we're at with, with Atom in a way. I mean, it doesn't go as wild, but Atom's all about the promise of the utility in the future. But I think, you know, with Ion and with, say, uh, you know, these Cosmos tokens, a lot of the bets come, you know, betting on the people behind them, right? You know, I mean, I was listening to Zaki, Zaki Mannion on uh, one of your videos, Cryptocito, and like just the way he was talking about Atom, I was like, I was just more bullish on Atom because it was him who was saying like, right, we will deliver token utility to Atom. There's more, I think he was saying about ways you can like acquire blockchains, essentially, like buy them out in some sort of like, not underhand fashion, but roundabout way, essentially, and like acquire their you know, staking them or share, share, sharing them, so to speak. So, like, you know, I think a lot of these Cosmos developers are super talented. So, like, you are speculating on, like, the development side, the innovation. And, you know, I just wanted to point that out. That's kind of, like, where we're at with Ion more so, but, like, we're also at that point with Atom. And Osmosis, you know, Sunny being behind that just makes you very bullish on, on Osmosis, right? So there's a lot of speculation. Yeah. And um, to add there, I think Atom, I mean, what, what the core developers have been doing over the past year is, it's just try to focus on ship the core technology pieces, right? One by one, Tenement first, and then the Cosmos SDK, and then IBC, and now Cosmosm, right? And it's a joint effort of a lot of different teams in the space, right? Tenement has also been working and it, you know, contributing a lot to these things. And I think now we're at a point where you think about, okay, now let's let's figure out the positioning of Atom and the whole value accrual standpoint for Atom in this whole ecosystem. And then, of, of course, like I said, right now it's not there yet, but I think... This is just something that can be figured out now because Atom has so, has contributed and done so much for the entire Cosmos ecosystem, right? Osmosis initially was bootstrapped by the um, Atom community. It was actually funded by the Atom community because originally Sunny used the funds, the revenue that he did with Sika on Osmo um, Cosmos to uh, to fund Osmosis, right? And the team, they had dropped to Os uh, Atom holders and stakers. So... Um, same for Juno, um, same for a lot of other projects, right? And we see 20 plus airdrops coming up now for Atom stakers and holders. So it's kind of like this voluntary shelling point in the Cosmos ecosystem that Atom is just um, not just being used as a community and liquidity bootstrapping um, and token distribution, but also in FMOS case and um, some others as well to to fund entire projects, right? FMOS could only, could only be started or revived because Atom holders voted to give 100,000 Atom to the FMOS development team to build FMOS. So that's why I think, like, sure, right now it's it's still in the stars, like, how which role Atom is going to play precisely, but it's already too big to fail, and it's already too big and too many parties involved, too valuable mm -hmm. for, for people to just, like, let it go, right? So, um, yeah, that's, that's what I think. Uh, I, th I think many my things are coming. My point was just that you can kind of, like, get a feel for where a project's going because of, like, the people behind it and, you know, what's being talked about. So that's kind of what I was saying, you know, with with like the speculative side of things is mm -hmm. that, you know, Zaki Mannion, the Cosmos team, what they've shipped, it makes you, you can speculate on the future because you know that they're, they're able to build, they're capable. And it seems like with Ion, it's similar in the sense that it's spawned out of the Osmosis community and you know something can come of it because it's a really strong community. Sunny's always innovating. And yeah, that was just the comparison I was kind of drawing there. Great. Thank you, Liam. Thank you. Now, there is something very innovative coming up. And that is super fluid staking. And I've mentioned this a few times, but Liam, if you want to take us into that, just, you know, when it's coming up, what it is. Sure. I mean, I'll, I'll take, I'll, I'll explain what um, liquid staking is, right? And then I'm quick to see Toad probably knows a little bit more about the details of super fluid staking. I'm, I'm well, hoping they, anyway. Well, are, they hopefully. are they different? Uh, they are different. Yeah, they are different. Even actually. more staking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, they serve the same purpose, right? Which uh, the idea is that you can lock more tokens up uh, to secure the, the network or you can secure the network more so. The, the difference is basically in the way that those tokens are, are locked up or what they get locked up in first. So I'll just explain like liquid staking very basically, which is uh, essentially, you know, proof of stake chains. Um, in order to secure the network, you have to lock tokens up uh, because you have to put those tokens on the line 
uh, as a validator to produce new blocks or have the right to produce new blocks and input data into them. Then if you do something malicious, you lose those tokens. So that's the way proof of stake works. So people delegate their tokens to validators, they get locked up, you get staking rewards. Um, the issue with that is you have to lock your tokens up and you can't go and spend your tokens or anywhere. Basically, you can't sell them, you can't add them into DeFi applications, you can't put them into lending and borrowing protocols. Um, and, and sort of beyond that, really, you know, let me just think about how to put it. So, you know, essentially you have this locked token you can't do anything with. But the second, you know, part of this and beyond just that is you then have this problem of what if you can get more yield than you get in, in terms of staking from DeFi? So like staking yields on the Cosmos Hub around 14% a year, right? So that 14% a year is to incentivize securing the Cosmos chain. So what happens though, if Osmosis, which they are, are offering like 50% to 100% a year on Atom, you know, Atom pairs or, or Osmo pairs probably get a little bit more, but you know, suddenly people are taking their staked assets, they're unstaking them and they're going and providing them to, as liquidity on Osmosis. And that's a problem because the chain gets less secure. So what do you do? Well, essentially, you need to secure the chain, but you, you have to compete with high APRs and DeFi. So the only way you can kind of do both is through liquid staking. So what it is, is you take a locked asset and you issue what's called a derivative. And the derivative just gets its value based on the asset it's derived from. So liquid staking means you can get issued an asset which has a value which is equal to the asset that you're staking. And therefore, it's liquid. This asset's totally liquid. And then you can go and put that into DeFi. So hopefully that's like a simple explanation. It might have been a bit complex. No, that's, no, that's good. That, that gave me the thinking behind it. And what it boils down to, I take my Atom, I put it in my Kepler wallet and I lock it to stake it and I get the rewards. But I also get to create a derivative of Atom, exactly. which I can then put into a liquidity pool. So I'm getting the rewards there. So there's rewards here and there's exactly. rewards here. So you're getting the best of both worlds, essentially. You know, you're getting the staking and you're getting the DeFi yield. And then when you want to get the underlying assets back, you just take your liquid assets, redeem them, and then you get your asset back. So that's the way liquid staking works. The key thing is you stake the asset first, and then you get the liquid token, which you put into DeFi. But as far as I understand, slightly different with with uh, superfluid staking, which hopefully Michael or Cryptocito, sorry, can uh, can unravel for us. Yes, superfluid staking. Yeah, so just to add on the uh, liquid staking thing, there's currently two um, big things in the works. One of them is P-Stake from the Persistence team, pstake.finance. Everybody can go there, bring fresh liquid atoms, wrap them, and then you get an ERC-20 token representation that is backed by that staked atom, and then you can use it in Ethereum DeFi. They're in the process of implementing IBC, so hopefully there will soon also be pools on Osmosis where you can trade your STK atom. Um, that's on the persistence team, and they're also tokenizing other liquid staking, uh, liquid uh, uh, other staked assets. Can, um, can like I just, security and can I just say that? Yeah. I, th I think they're going to be issuing assets on um, one of Terra's applications next, um, and then they're going to be issuing on persistence, which is where you can have it in like Osmosis and stuff. Um, I spoke to nice. Avatej recently, actually, so that's kind of the uh, the roadmap, I think. So Terra first, yeah, then, yeah. Mm. nice. Yeah, I mean, so that's that's kind of like the, the, the one solution. But the thing for that is you cannot convert your already bonded atoms into um, STK atoms through P-Stake, right? So you have to like unbond them and then stake them through P-Stake, which is like a gap of three weeks that you basically lose out on, on staking rewards. Now, what's coming now with the upcoming, what is it, the Theta upgrade, I think it's called? Yeah. Um, later in March, or first quarter at least this year, is... Liquid staking, as proposed by Zaki Manian, <clears throat> who uh, is a core contributor and developer. And this allows you to convert your already staked atoms without having to unstake them as, an, uh, as a staked uh, liquid, liquid, uh, liquid token, liquid stake token, whatever. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> confusing terms. But so I, I just wanted to like, um, say that these, these two options are predominant. And I think um, we'll see which one uh, gains more adoption on the liquid staking front. But like Liam said, first you stake, then you liquefy that stake through another token that you can use in DeFi. Super fluid staking inverts that and means that you first use your tokens in DeFi. For example, on Osmosis, you provide liquidity, and right, we all know you get this uh, LP token then. And what super fluid staking allows is that the protocol, the chain, accepts this LP token as collateral to be staked, right? And then through IBC, because if you provide liquidity, for example, you always have a pair, right? You have two tokens. Through IBC, you could even say, you can even signal, for example, if you have the um, Osmo and Atom pair, you can signal to the Cosmos chain, hey, the Cosmos hub chain, 
hey, by the way, um, you also have Atom here in this LP token uh, pool. Would you want to stake that, right? And then you can first do DeFi and then you stake your LP token. So you just ex allow the protocol a different form of collateral to be staked. Um, but it is obviously backed by an underlying asset, in that case being Atom and Osmo, right? Um, but there has to be like a, a continuous rebalance, right? Because you have to price in a factor in the permanent loss also that you have to, um, to providing liquidity. But that's what superfluid staking is. Um, basically the inverse what, um, of what liquid staking is. And according to Sunny, and obviously I'm not a tech guy, I'm not a developer, um, but according to like, you know, the guys that develop superfluid staking, this um, is a more secure way um, to, uh, to make sure that um, you're adding security to the chain and decentralization. Because in liquid staking, for example, if you lose your tokens or your ownership, right, and then someone else has your um, stake asset, you could just unbond it, right, and you're actually harming the protocol. Whereas in this case, in superfluid staking case, you're um, sure that you, made, you remain the owner of the of the asset. So, um, yeah, that's why. And, and superfluid staking is coming by the end of February. Otherwise, uh, Sunny will have to shave his hair bald. That's what he promised. <laughs> and um, super uh, liquid staking is coming um, in this quarter as well on the Cosmos hub. So that we can all liquefy our our staked atoms. Um, that's going to be really really um, exciting. Fabulous. And what that's going to mean for many many people is increased rewards. Because you get the rewards from both systems, from the from the liquidity pool and from the staking, which is uh, even more exciting, and it's going to make even more of a difference to many, 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 many more people. And I think draw more people into the Cosmos ecosystem, also as it continues to expand, continues to expand. Now, as it continues to expand, it's really, really important to stay informed. And I can think of no no two channels better than uh, Confident in Crypto and Crypto Cita's channel to stay informed with what's going on in the uh, Cosmos ecosystem. Guys, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate this. Any last words you want to say before we finish up? Um, I can quickly say something. First of all, um, I do have a question, Crypto Cita, with Superfluid staking. Um, I was wondering if you're still eligible for the airdrops um, that you'd be receiving, uh, and also for the, the, the normal Atom liquid staking. Do you still get the airdrops as well? Because that's an issue I think they, you know, people had with stake. That's a very good question. I actually don't think so because if it's in an, uh, a different form of collateral, um, it either counts as your you know airdrop for a liquidity provider. Maybe there's going to be a new category in the future where you know airdrops are specifically for superfluid stakers on Osmo, right? Like um, like Osmo LPs now. A lot of Osmo LPs get airdrops. Um, so we'll see. Maybe that's a new category, but I don't know. Like on the technical layer, like how complex it would be to to airdrop um, coins to to superfluid stakers. Um, because yeah, for example, if you're holding your atoms, right, and you're holding them on the Cosmos Hub chain natively, you count as an atom holder. But if you if you bring your atoms on the Osmosis chain, your atoms are no longer on the native chain, so they're an Osmo. So you're not you don't like you, you don't qualify for an atom holder in that sense, right? Even though you're holding atom, but it's on a different chain. So IBC twists the whole logic of of receiving airdrops, and that's why people have to be aware of of that. Um, that's why I always recommend people like you know just do a little bit of both. What I do is mostly stake my 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 atoms in my osmo natively on chain, chill, sit back, relax, you know, claim and compound, have a little bit of osmosis LP uh, providing liquidity, even on SIF chain on other dexes, right? Get a feeling for other um, dexes in the ecosystem, and then whenever new things come out, right? I mean, Umi is launching, Kava just implemented IBC, so they're also now getting more and more traction with their lending protocol. Like it just makes sense to like use these protocols early on and um, maybe lock up some liquidity to potentially qualify for airdrops that are being built on top of these protocols. Um, but yeah, final words from my side. Uh, I guess thanks for, for bringing us on here. This was really cool. And um, really cool to see also that uh, more and more content creators are covering Cosmos now more and more because that's what we need. I mean, Liam and I have been um, probably the, the one of the earlier ones, but um, we need support. So everyone who's watching, um, get, into, get into covering Cosmos on Twitter, on YouTube. Make memes. I think the meme culture is also really cool now. And Chihuahua and now upcoming Popmos. Um, provide the perfect ground for you guys to, to make cool stuff. And um, yeah, Cosmos is, um, I think, unstoppable from here on. So um, I think uh, we're in the right train. Very good. Very good. Thank you both. Really, really appreciate it. Now, if you're watching uh, and you are in the Cosmos ecosystem, throw me some ticker symbols you know, for your favorite Cosmos project. And if, you're, if you've got Chihuahua, then I will settle for a few wolves. I got a lot of wolves on my last Chihuahua interview instead of the ticker symbol, but that will do. If you have any comments or questions, put them in the description below. Go check out their channels. And between now and when I see you next, 
Please keep filling your pockets with crypto profits. This is Crypto Rich and Crypto Sita and Crypto Liam signing out. All the best. Bye-bye. Cheers.